Hello and welcome to EJC News Focus. The European Multidisciplinary Cancer Congress in Stockholm was awash with new findings which could improve the survival and quality of life of patients. But many of these advances come with a heavy price tag attached and it's putting a severe strain on health budgets even in the wealthiest countries. The Lancet Oncology has published a commission. I asked lead author Richard Sullivan how serious the problem is. General healthcare costs have absolutely lost control at the moment. We're talking about over 17% of GDP expenditure on health in the United States. We're hitting 10% and rising in most European countries. And a large part of those healthcare costs come from non-communicable diseases and specifically from cancer. And the problem is that the debate has been taking place away from the cancer community. And it was clear that policymakers and the macroeconomic system were reacting to these unsustainable increases in healthcare costs, starting to change things. But the debate was actually taking place outside the communities, for which it should frankly be taking responsibility. So the aim of this commission was really to, first of all, bring the debate back into the cancer community to say to the cancer community, you're responsible for this. And if you don't take responsibility for it, somebody else will. And solutions will get imposed that may not go in your favour. Some of these are very, very difficult debates that need to take place between policymakers, clinicians, and the general public and patients. For example, around futile care. What do we mean by futile care? Why are we spending so much money on futile cancer care? And, and these are the sort of things which require both education and debate. And unless you have them in these transparent fora between individuals that are willing to speak to evidence, then unfortunately you're going to get all sorts of misinformation occurring. Could you give us concrete examples of the sort of measures you say need to be taken? This isn't a kind of, we'd love it to be a global solution. It can't be. It will be broken down into individual tribes, member states, etc. Um, and there are immediate solutions, for instance, like a very easy one to give you, is that we really need to start having embedded socioeconomic studies to all our clinical studies now. If 15 years ago, people would have done chemotherapy trials, and, and if they did a biological add-on study, that was unusual. Now, no one would dream about doing a clinical trial without having a biological add-on study. So why aren't they doing putting add-on socioeconomic studies? And these have a fraction of the cost compared to most of the biological studies. And this is the sort of evidence we need to have to make judgments about the cost of technologies and the trade-off benefits. I was interested also that in the Commission you point out that the costs of clinical trials have to be reduced. First of all, I think there has to be a general recognition that we have a serious problem in terms of overregulation, both in Europe and in North America, and that it's become, in a sense, a self-sustaining business. And somehow we need to find a way of harmonising both in terms of regulatory authorities and also health technology assessment programmes. How we ratchet down the cost of pharmaceutical developments, for example, is a completely different matter because there are so many hidden costs and so many hidden budget lines. But the problem at the moment is, again, these are unsustainable. Eventually, it's going to cause a crash over the next 10 to 20 years. So again, we're seeing drugs coming out with ever-increasing costs for each individual dose. How on earth are we going to get value-based pricing in if the overall cost of R&D continue to go up and up? So we have this problem here that we know we have to constrain those costs. There are models out there. But there has to be the political willingness to take that step forward and start to break this ratchet chain. And without that political willingness, and it's going to need to come with you know, a lot of force from patient advocates, from the clinical community, then this will not stop until the system actually just simply shatters. Can we really expect patients as a group to be concerned about the costs of their treatment? So Patients are absolutely critical and central this day of age. In fact, I, one, one of the interesting things I think about the Commission is, is the recognition that they have been even further outside the debate that perhaps the clinical communities or indeed the policy makers have been. And they need to be pulled right into the centre of this. So the issues of affordability and cost now are having serious long-term repercussions on families. So huge levels of personal bankruptcy being filed in the USA due to diagnosis of cancer, 
huge additional stresses on families as they simply use up all their savings and indeed file eventually for bankruptcy when one of their members is diagnosed with cancer. You know, we're talking about nearly 52 million people in the USA without insurance for cancer who have poor outcomes. In Europe it's slightly different because we have a more social health care system and so the issue for Europe is really getting people to recognise how much money is spent on them in the first place because people have no sense often, particularly in the UK for example, of just the sheer amount of money it costs to treat them for their cancer. And so there's a dissociation with the reality of the economics of health care. Well, why should they be engaged if they don't know what the cost is? So the education issue in the UK, for instance, much of Europe is a different one. But nevertheless, everyone agrees on the issues around equity, around justice, and around fairness. You know, human beings, we hate unfairness. So this is where the patients can really come into the forefront. What will happen if we don't implement some of these measures? If we don't start taking responsibility for this and over the next decade start pushing through solutions and making hard choices, then somebody else will make those hard choices for us or the hard choices will simply happen by default. And One of the analogies we use about this is the train coming off the tracks. That's what you will see. You will see levels of inequity growing. You will see huge increases in, in differences in outcome, do, depending on whether you're affluent and affluent or a deprived area. And, and it will cause social issues. I mean, these are major, healthcare is a very personal, very driven area. If you look around the world, health, inequities in health, have been huge drivers to social change. So we have to take responsibility for it now because if we don't take responsibility, someone else will or it'll simply happen by default. So inaction is not an option. And on that note, we come to the end of this month's EJC News Focus.